Welcome to Two Dudes, One Movie Podcast, the podcast where two dudes dive into cinematic masterpieces from a different decade each week. From black and white classics to modern day blockbusters, we'll be covering it all. This season, we'll be focusing on romantic comedies. And for our eighth episode of the season, we're back to the present. And back to the present. And back to the present. See what I did there? Rick, this week, we're talking about none other than the 2020 hit, Palm Springs. This is an interesting pick for us because it's not our traditional rom-com, Rick. It has a a big sci-fi element to it, but obviously there's heavy, heavy inspiration from Groundhog's Day. Parker, I'm just happy that we're out of New York. I was getting sad. We very drastically shifted our vibe away from new york this week well and last week last week was a little tease getting out and now we're <laughs> yeah now we're, full, we're fully out we were we were just driving to the suburbs last week and now yeah we're we're gone cross country i have purposefully articulated this recap to make you a little a little peeved rick please go ahead all of our listeners out there want to hear your recap give us a recap on palm springs Takes place in a desert. Check. A lot of explosions. Check. A main character who's a bit depressed and loves banging. Check. For a moment I thought I was watching Oppenheimer, but then I realized I didn't have to pretend to be entertained. If Groundhog Day drank a Corona, you would get Palm Springs. Fitting for the 2020 COVID year, this movie basically depicts my life during lockdown, doing the same exact thing every single day. Because I was stuck in a time loop with J.K. Simmons constantly chasing after me. Palm Springs stays true to its groundhoggian genre and splits off in different ways we have not seen before. It really makes me wonder if I would rather die than driving six hours in traffic. Rick, what if your time loop was that you, instead of like waking up every day in your bed, it was like you started on your commute and it was you were stuck in traffic. So (laughs) bad. (laughs) <laughs> you were like so even like if you were trying to do anything else during my time loop day you have to wait to get out of like highway traffic for two <laughs> <Yeah>. hours <laughs> i i assume though after it at some point you would just get out of your car when you reset and just run somewhere at some point do you just like one of them do you just carjack a cop like you got to make it fun right yeah you definitely gta it at least once or twice the traffic is my biggest fear did you know that um, Atlanta was trending? Atlanta traffic was trending the other day because every direction on every highway had red on it. That's awesome. <laughs> it, it made it to, to world trending news. So that's cool. Taking people to the airport is always awful around Atlanta. It's one of my least favorite parts. Yeah, I saw yesterday that there was like a semi truck that somehow got past this like guard gate thing and then it got stuck in there and then nobody could get out. So that was just the other day. Atlanta's a hot mess. I don't understand how it survives, but I still live here. So Hot Atlanta Park. Well, Rick, enough about Hot Atlanta. Let's get into the hot desert of Palm Springs, and let's talk a little bit about the good, the bad, and the ugly. Rick, why don't you go first? The park. I'm going first. I feel like this is rare. Rick. You have to go first. I always like, especially at the very start, you always write a lot of notes for the goods. And I usually will give you, I will usually do three lines and then we'll just, that'll just, that'll just kind of be it. Well, three, not even lines, three dashes. So here I'll go, <laughs> Park. True. I have freshest time loop since Hog Day. Like, I feel like recently the Groundhog Day time loop formula, I feel like has been very fresh recently, which has been really good. At least the mainstream pro- popular ones. I'm sure there's hundreds of ones that we don't even know about because they're so bad that's that's fair we were talking about before the podcast this might be my second favorite it's either my second or third favorite time loop movie i i don't think anyone can say groundhogs is not groundhogs day is not number one since that's like literally what it is known for altogether i just think this is a very fresh story i think it's really cool to almost blend in the rom-com and sci-fi into it so that's awesome i think toned down andy sandberg is the best andy sandberg And I don't even think that it would be an unpopular opinion. I feel like generally his better things that he's worked on is toned down. Like when I think of 
non toned down Andy Samberg. I almost think he's a, he's closer to Adam Sandler <laughs> like level comedy, which to me is just a little bit annoying. So um, that's just my personal preference of comedy. Obviously, he made his brand with Lonely Island. I freaking love Lonely Island when I was in middle school. Uh, that was middle school, though, right? It's true. So I think that like this toned down, almost like grown up Andy Samberg is really good. His TV shows, I think, are like like Brooklyn Nine Nine. I think is like phenomenal. But also, like I don't even think that. I think that's pretty toned down too. I think it's interesting that you're talking about him being toned down yet at the same time he still is so childish in this film. Yeah, I know. But in a more medicated way, in a sense. I feel like that's Jim Carrey's brand of humor for his whole career. Is I was adding like a childish element to things. But obviously I think it shows like there's like a way you can do it. So I think this is my favorite thing that Andy Samberg has worked on. Brooklyn Nine Nine might be. I I I think that show is hysterical. What about is it Hot Rod Rick? Is that is that what it's called? Oh, Hot Rod's so good. I always forget about Hot Rod. <laughs> yeah, don't forget about Hot Rod Rick. I guess like that obviously is n- normal, or like kind of old Andy Samberg. I think that was like done perfectly, and then I think you just saw that version of Andy Samberg and everything. Yeah, I like this as like a movie and as a story better than Hot Rod. This is a much better script. Yeah, like if I'm comparing laughs. Like, you'd be crazy not to take Hot Rod. So just, it's just what you're looking for in a movie. There's some really great emotional beats and just story beats in general within this film. So, Which brings me to my good, which is that, Rick. <laughs> I want to start off my premise by saying that um, I don't have a lot of bads for this movie, but I also don't have a lot of goods. This movie, in a lot of ways, falls into the, this is enjoyable. I like this. This is fun. But there isn't a lot in it that blew me away, if that makes sense. And I don't think that's a bad thing by any stretch of the means. I think it knows what it is. It knows what it's trying to do. It knows the story it's telling, which is more than probably 70% of films out there nowadays can say. And it executes it well. So that first and foremost needs to be said. Um, I also like the energy of this film. It, it's just really contagious. It's it's just fun. It doesn't try too hard. It doesn't try to be too serious or, or technical. It's just fun. It's a fun film. And I, I agree with you. This is one of the best, if not the best, iterations of the time loop since Groundhog's Day. I think you and I were discussing pre-show. There's an argument for Edge of Tomorrow slash Live, Die, Repeat, depending on however you want to call that film because it was called both at one point or another, as another top-notch time loop movie. And then finally, I like the premise of how Niles has been in this time loop for years already, and how the film starts in the midst of that. It creates for a really enjoyable first viewing experience before you really know that the time loop is going on, and just to, to figure out that he's been there for... X amount of, we don't we don't know exactly how long, but that he's been there for a very long time, I think is a great way and a fresh perspective and take on this time loop. Because when I think back on the time loop and every other time loop, it's always someone getting caught in it at the very beginning and like coming to process it and understand it and then, you know, get used to the uniformity of each day in a sense. But with this, he's already past that stage. And then obviously the introduction happens with Sarah. Yeah, those are those are some of my goods, Ricks. Ricks, Rick. Hey Parker, I have one more good. It's the best the best good of all. You might call this great. Rick, did I oh my gosh, I cut you off. You just cut I, me off, Park. It's this three letters, Park. It's Roy. Well, I knew that this was the best good of them all. That's why I had to go first so you could say it last. First of all, I think the comedic timing of Roy every single time is incredible i also think it's jk simmons i think jk simmons knows when he's given a role whether it's a lead role or supporting role jk simmons knows how to execute it perfectly yeah um i think i honestly i love roy he was such a a surprise for me coming into this film i had no idea that he was going to be in it i didn't really know a whole lot about this film coming into it and to see him i was like this is awesome i love this i love this character i love what's happening and he just comes in the most amazing way shooting an arrow into Andy Samberg's back like I think the best way to watch this movie I feel like it's the way how you watched it's the way how I watched it 
And it's kind of funny if, we're, if we do recommend people to watch it in the end after they've already listened to this podcast. I think the best way to watch it is if you don't really know too much. Yeah. So if you're listening to this podcast before you've seen it, you're doing it wrong. I mean, we're already in a few minutes. Just stop listening. We still get a review or listen. That's true. Get then go watch and you can come back. Parker, it's time to move on to the bads. This is... I'm a grumpy person. This is what I look forward to every time we do the podcast. I like seeing what is wrong <laughs> in life, I guess. So, Park, you start off. Oh, Rick, now you're going to have me start off. I like that. Yeah, we'll change up. Apologies for anybody out there who can hear a weird moaning noise behind me, but that is a cat. Just thought I'd preface that. <laughs> it's going to be really <laughs> stupid if no one hears I anything. I hope no one hears it because I can't hear <laughs> <Yeah>. it. <laughs> Uh, Rick, again, I don't have a lot of bads, but this movie does feel a bit messy at times. I will say, I think it's a nice script. I think there's a good story arc here, but it also feels like there's more to this universe and the time loop than, than that what's being shown or explained. And things are kind of introduced, but not necessarily built upon in any way, shape, or form. And my obvious pick for my point in this is uh, when there's dinosaurs that show up in the desert and they're just kind of watching them walk around off in the distance and there's no logic or reasoning or explanation besides the fact, I guess you could assume that they got caught in a time loop or something, but nothing happens or goes with that. And uh, I feel like there are a few other instances with similar situations like that throughout the film that I just feel like made it a little messy at times. You're obviously more in the film. You are in the film world. Is there times that you like plan for certain things of a movie or scripts, but then you have to cut a lot of things out for like, I guess they did a 21 day shoot, which is extremely short. So like if they plans for something for like a 35 day shoot, like added two more weeks, would they intentionally like cut stuff out? You think that would, but that could be something that had to do with answers like dinosaurs and stuff. Yes and no. If something was going to be 35 days, I doubt it would get cut down to 21 days before production began or something like that. It would be something like you pitch the script, the studio comes back or whoever's financing comes back and says, we're going to do it, but for this price tag. And then you go back and you're like, okay, we can't, we're not going to have the time to do this, this, and this. Let's start rewriting things. And you would rewrite around around that in you know fix some of those issues and connections in pre-production but there are also instances when you just don't get to things shooting schedules are really tight they're really dense every day is 12 14 hour days and if you you know get off schedule it can put you behind and every day you fall behind can be millions of dollars and the reality is for lower budget films Things have to be sacrificed at times when you're in the midst of productions. Again, I don't think the dinosaur situation it falls into that because they spent the time, resources, and visual effects to create that. I just think that that was kind of messy. Gotcha. I mean, I pretty much agree with you. I feel like I just have a different way of saying what you said. I, like, I think you need to take the story at face value, and you can't think of like the science or like the lore behind it. And I also think it's even like a lesson to... For me, for like other movies, I don't think every single thing about every single movie needs to be picked apart. No. I think it's okay to take things at face value. That being said, like we're talking, we're, we're picking things apart by talking about a bad and an ugly. So like if I'm going to pick this apart, I think for example, like what happens in this universe if they both take six hour shifts and sleep in and alternate for ever? Does it only loop back, loop back if they sleep at the same time? Or does the universe split off like Loki, like all the little things? And there's just a bunch of multiverse time loops. But like to me, I like say that as a bad. But like honestly, like to me, like I like I say it as a bad because I think it could be it could be a little deeper in terms of just like hey, there's this time loop situation going on. Now here's our whole plot. I think it, I think people like lore. I think people absolutely love stuff like that because they like talking about it and debating about things. That's why I have this as a bad and not, I guess, as like an ugly because I don't, I would say I don't also think it's necessary. And I totally agree with you. Not everything needs to be taken so seriously. Things can just be taken at face value. Things can just be fun. Things can just be entertaining to see visually and it doesn't always need to be explained or complex. But at the same time, we are a movie podcast and so that part of our job is kind of to dive into it a little bit deeper than, uh, than probably we would even normally do. Rick, obviously those were our bads, which was not a lot. 
but we we have some uglies as well. We do. Do you want to go ahead and share your ugly with the audience? I think my ugly, it's the same ugly as Niles. I just wrote down six hour drives. I love that when he went to go visit Roy, um, when it was his time to leave, he was like, I'd rather die and wake up than drive six hours back. I completely agree. I think I would as well. That being said, did Roy drive six hours to go to this wedding? Like he woke up from his house then drove because they met at the wedding, right? That was implied. Yeah. Yeah. He was one of the guests at the wedding. So six hour drive to go to the wedding. That's a little long. I guess if you, I mean, that's so long. I guess if he was staying there that night. Rick, this is where the script falls apart again. Why was his family not at the wedding? Why on the day that Niles goes to visit him at his house, why aren't they getting ready for the wedding? Oh, that's true. And the big trip, they're just playing in the backyard. Are you? Are we supposed to assume that the rest of his family didn't come to the wedding? There's just so many open-ended questions. I was lo- would have loved if they like, if we could have seen it from Roy's perspective for a day. <laughs> yeah. It had like one of those barbarian shifts, yeah, and like perspective <laughs> so cool. and tone. Yeah, that would have that would actually yeah that been really interesting. Yeah, I guess like that is where the script falls apart. And to me, like I think that's something that's like okay that I, I like watched that. I was like that's kind of weird that this isn't really explained. Uh, whereas like I don't need to know the science behind things, but I guess I agree. Like that's where it almost falls apart a tiny bit. I mean, fall, we we say fall apart in a very loose term. It doesn't take really hinder the story or no, the, not at all. that they're trying to, to tell. It's just nitpicking. It's just plot detail. It's just the fluff. We're 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 picking the fluff, really. I, just, I, I craved more Roy Park since the first moment I set my eyes on him and they, they took it away from me. Rick, they did. But he had a great he had a great emotional story beat in the film. He did. When Niles goes to visit him. I think that's just J.K. Simmons in the end, you know? Like, that's everything he's in. I think it's kind of sad and funny, though, that Roy is still trapped in the time loop when the other two <laughs> get out. He got the... Did you see the little after credits thing? <laughs> no, there was, a, there was an after credits thing? Yeah, well, did you see... I don't know if it's after credits or... If, I think I thought it was after some credits where uh, Roy is, like, at the wedding and then he goes up to... Niles and he like pats him on the back and he was like well what happened did you guys figure it out and then Niles has no idea what he's talking about (laughs) so it like implies that Niles broke out of it okay well we knew they broke out of it too from when they were at the pool I saw a lot of people debate of that they don't like the ending that they finally broke out of the cycle and then they go into the same swimming pool and wait for the family to show up I also I think it would be better if you if they just got rid of that ending and then after they blew themselves up that goes to like the after credit scene like directly to the after credit scene i don't know because the story it it's about niles and sarah and so it makes sense to have that conclusion there and then also they weren't like waiting it was the the day after and when they're sitting in that pool you're you're almost thinking as the audience maybe it didn't work they're just doing it for the audience Not for the story itself. Yeah, but I think it works well. And again, it's one of those things where you can't nitpick at it too hard. Because the moment that family does show up, you're like, ah, they did make it. They worked. I know, but I guess I just have a a pet peeve about movies just trying to say gotcha to the audience and (laughs) nothing else. That felt like it was just a gotcha. Mm. I don't know if it was a gotcha. It was just a delayed answer, in my opinion. Well, I don't know, Park, but I'll fight you about this. Anyways. Sarah, so you're ugly. Rick, I smell a new debate coming up around, across it. the horizon. <laughs> this is such a small little... <laughs> thing yeah, such a niche, a niche debate thing. <laughs> Rick, my ugly for this film is sleeping with your sister's fiancé the night before her wedding. Mm. Mm. Rick, who's the worst person in that situation? The sister or the groom? I mean, they're both terrible they're both equally the worst right well i guess it kind of sounded like i feel like everyone knew that the sister was awful like it was already understood so i guess if you trusted the groom like if uh, i don't even know what her name is camilla mendez's character tala if she like trusted the groom then i guess in her eyes that's obviously the absolute worst thing depends what perspective you're looking at it that's a good point that's like almost a bigger betrayal because she had given him her trust Whereas with her sister, she kind of 
knew the issues and kind of complications in that relationship. So she probably wouldn't have given the trust as, as much. At the same time, it's a horrendous betrayal on both sides. Oh, yeah. It's awful. That's going to make next Thanksgiving real messy. It's going to make next Christmas real messy. You just don't want to be there for that. Well, actually, we don't even know how it uh, how that whole thing finished after they broke out of the loop. <laughs> yeah, that's true. We don't know how. Uh, I would assume she just breaks it off with him and doesn't doesn't bring it up to her sister. Oh, Park, you still think she didn't learn anything? She's just still bad. Uh, I think she learned not to do that anymore. I just don't think she uh, learned to tell her sister. These are the these are the the plot plot and story threads that we don't get answers to. Oh man, well my answers, Park. Rick, well that's too bad. I just thought of another um, ugly. Rick, please. So Park, you know one of my weird pet peeves is when things happen with different um, drinking vessels. That hey, look at that! Just as you pull up a, a drinking vessel, I do. I that just doesn't make vessel. that doesn't really make too much sense. So I refuse to believe that a man who has lived the same day for forty years—that's where the estimation is, because that was in a script, it was somewhere in a script or a dialogue read or something like that. But obviously, it didn't happen in the movie. So Andy Samberg probably has lived that for forty years, is the estimation that he is drinking the same beer still every single day. I, just, I don't buy it. Rick, if... How do you not get tired of that part? If you really love it, if you if that's <laughs> what you love. Like, for me, like, I could eat Cracker Barrel chicken fried chicken every single day. I like, I could can. drink Coca-Cola every single day. I'm not going to get tired of it, Rick. You can have one, but he's pounding, like, do you think he probably has seven a day? Do you think he could drink seven glasses of Coke a day? <laughs> I think I could, especially oh, in a time loop. I guess that the health defects doesn't happen because you're just, just restarts i guess why not yeah maybe your craving also restarts for things it's just your brain that's stuck there, yeah there it is maybe that's <laughs> okay you broke down the science rick i guess i broke it sorry just drinking vessels nothing gets me on a on a podium more than that park that's that's true our new segment for the season now and then where we talk about the differences and similarities to the genre from now to then we don't have to dive deep into this to know what we're going to talk about. Everybody knows what we're going to bring up in this section. This movie has huge inspirations from Groundhog Day and the time loop gimmick. Some of the similarities, the time loop, they're both romantic comedies fit in that genre. Palm Springs itself even harkens back, Rick. There's that word that we both love, harkens. Love it. It's the first t-shirt or hat word, first merch word work harkens back to the theme of Groundhog Day about overcoming selfishness when Sarah comes clean to her sister about sleeping with her soon-to-be husband. Obviously, though, this doesn't have the same magical effect on the cosmos as it does in Groundhog Day, but that's where things start to, to be a little different. In Groundhog Day, it's a moral solution in a sense, whereas in Palm Springs... Overcoming the time loop is a practical solution. Studying science, uh, figuring out all of that fun stuff to hit the portal at the exact moment, the exact time they need to, yada, yada, yada. But each of them work very well in their respective roles because the growth of the character, specifically in Palm Springs, specifically with Niles, is not about overcoming his some type of selfishness or insecurity or anything like that but it's about embracing you know the unknowns of life does that make sense it does make sense i don't know if you were, i didn't know if you were asking me or if you're asking the audience there rick i'm asking everybody now i got one more thing i want to talk about and, and probably the biggest difference between the two films of groundhog day and palm springs is and what i think think personally works better in for palm springs than groundhog day is the relationship of the couple i think is way more believable and an, a way more authentic love story because both characters are in the time loop in palm springs compared to one in one out in groundhog's day 
I've always had a hard time believing that buying into the relationship in Groundhog's Day because every day, you know, half of the love, the love connection forgets everything. And you're telling me that Bill Murray is able to speed her up on everything that's happened every single day. It's like 50 first dates. I mean, it just, it doesn't work for me in that sense. And that's what I really like about Palm Springs is they're both in this time loop and they're both experiencing this together and they're both having overcome this adversity together. And I think that that is really compelling and works in a big, big way, big favor towards the film. Since we're comparing a lot to Groundhog Day, um, are we allowed, can you like invent a genre? I feel like Groundhog or Groundhog or Groundhogian should just be a genre at this point. Sure. I mean, I would, I wouldn't say Groundhog. I would call it the time loop genre. No, I I want to, I want to, it should be named after Groundhog. Okay, Rick. That's what I want for. All right. Give it to me. Call it call it that then. Groundhogian. Groundhogian. It is time for s- crazy stupid questions. Rick, no, you're wrong. You're wrong. Crazy stupid questions is only a last week thing. We're back to stupid questions. Oh, I'm so sorry. Rick, it was how- not edited out. It wasn't, but you couldn't understand i couldn't i'm sorry that's all right we'll forgive you this one time well it's time for normal stupid questions how about that that's i'm all right with that as long as it's stupid spelled s-t-o-o-p-i-d always right. park you, you tell you tell us that each week <laughs> <laughs> i just want to make sure no one forgets rick i feel like we need to paint the picture of a time loop for this so what's it's gonna the question is what is the first thing you do in a time loop what is where where are we starting our time loop though just waking up in our own beds? Or I think so. Know? Just waking up in our in our own beds, Rick. I think the first thing I would do is, so since I live in Atlanta, I at one point lived south of the city in a, in a smaller town called Fayetteville. And just on the outskirts of Fayetteville, there is a giant mansion with a gate outside with the letters RR on it. Who else is that for? But Rick Ross, Rick. It's Rick Ross's mansion. And I drove past that that huge estate that looked like a castle. Rick, the first thing I do is I'd hop the fence and I would go check out Rick Ross's crib. He's probably not there because I feel like most of the time he's not at his actual home because that's how celebrities operate. Well, oh, my producer in my ear is, has told me that he has sold his mansion. But that still does not mean I don't want to go see it. I, the, I wonder if the RR is still there. Unless he sold it to a guy that also has an RR... Name. Yeah, I, I think that's that was probably one of the prerequisites for being able to buy it is you have to have or you had to be you had to change your last name you had to change it exactly. Rick, you're pretty close to being able to to do that. You're halfway there. If I could have afford it and that was in the clause, I would just change it to like Rick Richards, Richard Richards, <laughs> Rick Richards, Richards, Richards. I like it. Well, Park, first thing I would do. <laughs> riveting i feel like sneaking in somewhere would be a it would be a very good first thing i think the similar similar idea so i guess it depends on the day if there's like a fun show i'm not really a concert person to add on to what i was saying i would definitely at one point fly to los angeles and just try and break into every celebrity's house at some point you're just really just after know. the celebrities part. i am i just <laughs> that's I don't what, know. That's every day i want to live a new celebrity's lifestyle I feel like it's hard to figure out what I would, the first thing I would do, because I would feel like I would still almost just live my life would be a little bit depressed. I do think I eventually get to a point to where I am trying to just go on flights and going to see new places and trying to make the most out of it. Yeah. And then you'd eventually get past that point where you're like, what's the point of any of this? But the thing is you can't fly too far because like you can't like fly across the world because you're spending like, well, you can't just fall. You can't fall asleep. That's fair. At least you just got to take the take like some of the trucker drugs so they use to stay awake on the road. Yeah, you can you can survive a couple of days. There you go, Rick. There you go. That'd be hard to do an international flight though without dozing off at all. I know that. <laughs> that'd, that'd be, be really so boring. <laughs> <laughs> I could not imagine doing that, flying across the world, staying awake that whole time, staying awake for like another 
24 hours once you've landed to do something just to fall asleep and wake back up, tap to go, do it again. <laughs> that, that would be hell. I have another question before we go to the second one. Um, Rick, as long as it's a stupid question, it's always welcome. This is now the second question, Park. You got to be ready. All right, I'm ready. Okay. Would you uh, take your wife with you into the time loop if you find out you're in the time loop? Like, do you also bring <laughs> Becky into it? Oh, man. Um, it's like Passengers, the movie Passengers. <laughs> she was, uh, I don't think I would at the beginning. I think if I couldn't figure out a solution, at some point I would sit her down one day and spend the entire day explaining everything to her and then give her the choice of whether she would want to or not with me. I feel like you, if she gave the choice no, you would just keep figuring out different ways to restructure your argument. (laughs) (laughs) Spend like four months every day just like arguing with her to eventually manipulate her into coming into the time loop with me. I'll tell you who I would who I would put in the time loop, no questions asked. Barney? Yes. Barnabas is coming to the time loop with me. (laughs) I get so many more years out of him that way. That's true. I'd probably throw Malcolm in there. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> That'd make the time loop so much better if you had your dog with you. And I mean, they wouldn't know any different. They no, live the they same wouldn't. life every day, anyways. <laughs> but they do, they're not going to get older. That's what's great about it. So wow, we have some youthful energy. I'll do that. Yeah, take the dog, Rick. Okay, Park. We have one more. I don't know why I'm reading all of them off. I'm like interviewing you. That's all right. I like to be interviewed. It it makes me feel like I'm important. I'm someone important. Well, Park, you. Um I guess maybe you're important <laughs> to your wife. You were you were gonna say you are, but then you thought about it. <laughs> uh, you jerk! All right, read the question, Rick. Would you rather take an arrow to the face or jump in front of a truck? Those are two of the deaths <laughs> that we. we Those are two of like the convenient, convenient ways to die that we've seen. I this movie. think I would rather. Oh gosh, I just don't think taking an arrow to the face is gonna kill you right away. I think you have a better chance of a quicker death jumping in front of a semi truck than you do of getting an arrow to the head. If I jump in front of a semi truck, like am I like after the initial hit, am I still like awake enough to feel when I hit the ground and it runs over me? Like that's that's terrifying. So I just Yeah, I don't know. It's can I can I just not? <laughs> no, Park, we need you need to take one. Alright, I'm gonna go with the truck. And I'm not gonna think about it. I'm just going to say that, and that's my final answer. Also, wait, this is a a better question. Why, if if the thing is, if you fall asleep, you wake up where you are. Why did, like, Andy Samberg, I guess he also chose to die rather than just try to take a nap. That's true. Well, he can't just take a nap. I guess he could have taken a nap in the car. I struggle sleeping, but I can take naps anywhere, Park. There you go. That's what I would do. I guess I'd just take a nap. I like that. I like that solution, Rick. That's a good one. <laughs> we have a fun activity on our hands. Like every week on the podcast, we always have fun, but specifically this moment, this activity, Rick. And we got a good one. We have a quiz. Specifically, this quiz, Rick, is would you make it out of a time loop? So we're just going to dive into this quiz. I'm really excited to uh, to see if we could do it. Just dive right in, Pork. Rick, do you want to do this together or do you want to answer separately? I think we should do it together. Like we're in the time loop together, you know? Yeah, that answers my question, Pork. If I get stuck in a time loop, I'm just going to bring you in with <laughs> You're me. You're just going to take me. <laughs> Great. Thanks a lot. We could record our podcast every, every day, day, but no one will get it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that sounds awful. Well, not not recording with you, Rick, just that nobody would get it. That's the awful part. Rick, let's start easy. Have you ever been in a time loop? Yes, and I've made it out. My current life is just the same day again and again and again. Please help. How should I know? For all I know, I could have just forgotten about it once I left it. Probably. For all I know, I could be in one right now. No. I think it's safe to say we're both no. I'm going to go no. I, for a moment, I was thinking my current life is the same day again and again and again, but that's only Monday through Friday. so That's true, Rick. It's not every day. That's just capitalism. Yeah. Rick, every day your best friend slash coworker slash sibling sends you a picture of a dog with f- a fun little haircut. 
every day your phone beeps as you receive one of these images. Which one would you rather get? I'm looking up. I've got the. <laughs> uh, I know which one I want to get. Maybe we should go separate paths, Rick. These are just two. Okay. Well, which one are you getting? I'm going with the white one that's like a poodle, but it has like an ice cube face. It's like a square <laughs> block. Face. I'm doing the one right under that because that dog's a famous dog. <laughs> okay <laughs> i wish our listeners out there i know could. i can't i don't even know how to describe these <laughs> it's just a really <laughs> ugly dog that rick's picking they're oh, all very floofy park. dogs though park what part of the day is your favorite one roughly early morning 6 to 8 a.m late morning noon early afternoon late afternoon evening early night 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 <laughs> or earlier morning rick i feel gypped because i would definitely pick 10 to 11 on this oh, list. I know. But, but I think I'm going to go with late morning. I think late morning is a good time. It's only an hour it's giving you. Noon they give you two hours. That's true. Early afternoon they give you two as well. What's with this? I'm getting gypped an hour. Uh, I'm getting noon because I think I love the feeling of 11 a.m. to 12. I don't know why. Rick, if you do night, night, or even earlier morning, you get three hours. That's true. That's a what a what a hit you got. That two to five a.m. Uh, that two to five. Yeah, quite a steal. <laughs> All right, Rick. I got another question for you. What popular '80s song should ring you awake every single morning in the time loop? Uh, I'm not going to read through all these, so just pick whichever one and say it out loud. I'm doing "Come On Eileen." I think that's the one to me that is going to be the least annoying after two thousand listens. I'm torn be- between wake me up before you go go or it gets so annoyed I want to pour my brains out over <laughs> or, time, though. or girls just want to have fun and I think girls just want to have fun is my pick because it would just be silly that a song about girls having fun is what's waking me a male up every day in my time loop I will, it, only you would see the little irony <laughs> no one else would, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> would share it with you <laughs> well Rick you would eventually I know I guess so what crafts would you like to perfect in a time loop? You got drawing, flirting, vi- you got a 100% of video game, playing an instrument, some kind of sport, pottery, watch every movie or and slash read every book. Love to get to know every corner person and ant in my neighborhood, city or village. Party tricks. They, they, I mean, I would want to try and accomplish all of these just about. Well, yeah, do at, one park. At some point. Flirting? You want to come with flirting? Well, not flirting, I guess. But if I had to choose, I'm, I'm going to do it in the context of which one I would do first. And I think I wouldn't be overtly ambitious. I think I would just go with 100% video game completion. because That's I've, exactly that's what I'm doing, too. I've never actually 100% in a video game before. I always just, like, beeped it narratively, but I don't waste. I've never been but one you to, you got to like, do it, right? You got to do it in the day because it's not going to save. You got to go, you got to go hard. Oh, that man, day. that's that's true you could you could do like a pokemon game or something though yeah that's true video game is definitely that's definitely what i would do i think first i feel like i've already seen unless DVD. rick you don't have to be do it all in one day if you bring the video game into the time loop with you wait rick i just thought about this what if you just brought everybody into the time loop just you slowly every, brought the you entire slowly brought world. everybody into the time loop and then it's everybody's there and it's all new every day, but nobody ages. And you're stuck with the same weather wherever you are. <laughs> if it's crappy weather, that's not good. Yeah. I hope I would get stuck in a, on a decent day. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a thought, Rick. Just a thought. Just, just a thought. Just a thought with Parker. Which painting speaks to you uh, the most? There's a lot of interesting paintings here. There's some scary ones. There are. Which one speaks to me the most? I'm kind of a gloomy person. Yeah. So I'm going to go with the gloom. There's like a gloomy London, old London London painting. I'm a very vibrant and colorful person, and I really like the painting by Aaron Hansen, which is kind of a, a skyline, but it's got a bright yellows and blues and some greens of the landscape with the mountains and the trees. Uh, so I'm going to go with that one. Hmm. I don't agree with your choice, but that's you, Park. Would you ever test out if you can die without any consequences? I would be, no, what if I die for real? I, I don't think I could genuinely get myself to that point. I just don't think I could. 
Yes, after some time, but in a way that makes sure it's quick and that I did everything I wanted to before in case I didn't wake up. I just think as humans, if we're go, I think we're gonna go crazy at one at some point. I mean, that's fair, but I don't know. I feel like that'd be so hard. Let's test it out, Park. Throw yourself into a time loop, and we'll we'll, we'll chat in a couple of years. Yeah, there we go, Rick. <laughs> All right, I got a question for you. How would you get out of a labyrinth? Don't question why you're there in the first place. I hope someone passes by, and then I'll ask until then I wait. There's probably some kind of system in the layout. I'm not going to read the rest of these. There's so many. I don't read the rest. Just say what you're going to do, Rick. Uh, I would probably just walk around aimlessly one day. I'll get it. I'm, I'm probably memorizing wrong turns. I'm, I think I'm going to really make it a, a mission to get out. There's like no context around this. I like the def. I'm actually going to go with the last one. Well, I hope the specific definition of labyrinth applies here, uh, and I will get out by just following the path. Hmm. That's fair. Park, do you believe in the supernatural? Yes. And I even have evidence, Rick. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say about that. You personally have evidence? Okay. That's all I'm saying, Rick. If you want to hear more, you're going to have to listen to the Two Dudes, One Supernatural podcast, the podcast where we talk about things... All things supernatural. Uh, I'll join you. Great. Fantastic. Lastly, what is your favorite time loop book or movie? If you don't know any of these, just go by vibe. Palm Springs is on here. Palm oh, Springs. Happy Death Day to you is on here, not the Edge ocean. of Tomorrow, Groundhog Day. They're all on here, Rick. With What is your favorite time loop book or movie? Okay, I'm going to go with Edge of Tomorrow. I think that's my favorite of them. That's to me. That's I need. I think I need to do it too because it's the it's the only one that I've rewatched probably more than two times. And I feel like that to me that says that. All right, Rick. Do you have your answer? Because I have mine. Uh, you go first. The answer of whether I would get out of a time loop or not is yes, but I've paid with my life. <laughs> Technically, you've made it. After two hundred days stuck in a time loop, death does seem more like a warm embrace than a punishment. You did everything you wanted to do. You had the most beautiful day over and over again. It was heavenly in the beginning, but became a bit annoying in the end. Now you're just happy it's over. Well, Park, mine is you don't know you're in a time loop. <laughs> Wake up. <laughs> because you make tiny different choices every day, and it might seem like it's different. But in the end, it's just the same day over and over again. Didn't you notice the temperature and weather always stays the same, or how that one plane in the sky makes the makes an eight shape every morning at 10 o'clock exactly or is it really an eight and rather an infinity symbol it's weird at the end i could see that i guess it's interesting that it thinks i'm going to kill myself to get out of the time loop but whatever <laughs> what the heck i'm only five percent the lowest percentage only five percent of people that's like this quiz got you don't know you're in a time loop <laughs> that's crazy let's see where am i uh 13 percent of people say that which is up towards the top wow the the highest is yes because you figured it out logically but it took you 35 days that's impressive if you can figure out how to get out of time loop in only 35 days that's like a speed run i like the next best answer you've never been in one you just don't age <laughs> <laughs> uh that was a good quiz rick i enjoyed that one i did i had i had so much fun that was fun like went, that was a fun like activity world it was. Like I just went to Disney World. On and Zoom. we just went to Disney World in everyone's ears who are listening. That is true. I hope you enjoyed I that. hope you enjoyed Disney in your ears. <laughs> that sounds so... <laughs> <laughs> Park, it is time. It is. It is time where for... Where the ROM meets the COM. And the only trademarked the ROM and the COM scale. <laughs> I'm going to go first, Park. Oh my gosh. All right. All right. First. Go ahead. I'm sorry. The ROM for me, Park, it was a miss. If I'm gonna be really? Honest. So I think as characters, as incredible actors, I think both of them know how to play off of certain en energies. Really like them. I even like them doing it together in a movie. The romance, though, I was not buying it, Park. Um, I'm going to go with two. Uh, you had a couple that you didn't buy. Yeah. The romance. This is my first one that I think I truly I don't buy, Park. I think it's more of a they just sleep together and they like each other's company. Anyways, I'm going to two. Comscale, I'm going to save it a little bit 
and I'm going to give it a three. All right. So that puts you at what? Five out of ten. Five out of ten. So that could go either way if it's uh, good or bad. Hmm. Well, Rick, you know, the more you start talking about the ROM, the more I kind of start agreeing with you. I thought I actually really enjoyed the, the romance, but I, I realize it's not necessarily the romance itself. It's just the characters and their arcs, more or less, than the romance. still think it's a better romance than Groundhog's Day romance because it's more believable because of them both being in the time loop. What was the last one you didn't buy? I forgot what it was. I'm trying to remember. Um... Sorry, I put you on the spot. It's not in our notes, Pork. We're off script. Yeah, I'm going back week by week now. Uh, what was our 90s? What was our 90s film? Well, 2000s was Hitch. 80s was Harry Met Sally. 90s. Oh, you got mail. You got mail would be the one, I think. Uh, that is the one that you said. Okay, that's... So do you, I guess, do you buy this romance more or less than that? I think I would buy it a little bit more. I'd buy it more. Gotcha. So I would give it, I think I'd give the romance a three. Just a solid three. Not bad, not good. That's fair. Um, and then for the com, didn't really have a lot of laughs. I think it's a really fun movie, but that doesn't necessarily, fun does not equate to calm, if you ask me, Rick. Calm is LOL. You know what I mean? Laugh out loud. Raffle even, Park. So calm, I'm going to give it a two. So Rick, I'm in the same boat. Five out of ten. Five out of ten on the rom-com scale. Different equation, Park, but we both got the same That's answer. That's how it works sometimes. That's the beauty of the scale. It is the scale. The scale knows it's all. It, it balances everything. Rick, I'm going to be sad when we retire this scale in a few more weeks. We have some personal picks to, to round out the season here. And Rick, some PPs. Yes. <laughs> and you're, you've, got, <laughs> you've got a PP first, Rick. I do. I do. Oh, my goodness. Why don't you tell us all about your PP? I will park my. <laughs> Come on, so, oh, we are children. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we are. <laughs> this is my favorite since the day I watched it, and even when I watched it a second and third time. Though I have not watched this in a couple years, uh, the Big Sick is my all-time favorite rom-com. All right. This is in my top twenty of movies. Period. Oh boy. So I'm curious to see where this stands up. Now again, I haven't. I think it was twenty. I think it was COVID. So probably twenty twenty is the last time I watched. Is the last time I watched it. So it's been a, it's been a bit. That'll be fun. That'll be fun to get you know fresh perspective after so many years to to rewatch film. I've seen it once, um, and it's been even longer than that. Probably the year it came out was when I saw yeah, 2017. it. Twenty seventeen. Yeah, so, I probably feel, saw I it cannot, in like twenty eighteen. When I looked at it, because I just wanted to see the title again to make sure I got it right. I uh, I was shocked that it came out six years ago. <laughs> It's crazy. crazy. Time flies, Rick. Time flies when you're watching movies. Man, I'm excited to watch this movie again. I like. I think a reason why I instantly rated it my my favorite rom com of all time is this is like the only one that there was a couple jokes that like I died laughing at, and that just does not happen to me in rom coms that much. Yeah, I don't remember the comedy that much uh, in it. I know like the premise, and I remember I've seen it, but I think it's gonna feel really fresh to me again when I watch when I rewatch it. So And I'm excited. I'm excited to dive into this. This was a was a must for me. Yeah, I'm excited to watch it as well. Well Rick, I guess that means until next week, this has been Two Dudes One Movie Podcast. The podcast where two dudes dive into cinematic masterpieces from a different decade each week. From black and white classics to modern day blockbusters, we'll be covering it all. Next week we got the big sick, but until then, we'll see you on the next one. Got nothing this time, Pork. Two Dudes, One Movie Podcast is an independently created podcast. Like, rate, follow, and subscribe wherever you listen. You can find the podcast on Spotify, iTunes, or wherever you get your podcasts. You can also find us on YouTube where we post full video recordings of each episode. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Two Dudes, One Movie Podcast. Thanks for listening.